done with chess uh, last year actually this year in delhi and uh, i am back with them again and you'll see me coming back over and over again with uh, them thanks to mukesh sir for inviting me uh, for this event okay guys so this is my instagram let's begin so that's my instagram and apart from first uh, five or six posts or seven posts actually eight posts this is my current style so anything with the gels anything with the lighting anything uh, where the colors are needed that's my that's my style so that's what i am doing on a daily basis uh, and uh, that's i guess most of uh, most of you are here for uh, the same reason to know uh, how it is done or to if you guys have any questions related to the lighting uh, you can always ask uh, there are some backstage videos which shows quite a lot that you can um, learn from um, uh, in regards to lights and how i'm posing and everything okay so keeping my work aside let's see First of all, um, let me see the app. This app is fairly new to me, so you guys can ask your questions here. Uh, let's see where, and someone from staff could uh, read out those questions. I would uh, highly recommend to probably write down your questions somewhere and ask them at the end of the video or uh, during the time when you'll start a Q&A session. Uh, and let's see, uh, okay, okay, okay. These are just test questions, perfect. So uh, we'll pick up one by one, everyone, and uh, everyone can ask their questions. Uh, I'm not sure how or we are going to do it. Uh, either we are going to do it on voice call or either I'm trying to, I will try to answer the questions, okay? But first I'll show you three different uh, light setups that I have prepared from the most expensive uh, lighting to the budget lighting, yeah? So I'm pretty sure um, everyone is working on budget and uh, that's the point, you know, you don't need the fancy lighting. So I know my style is with the colors and everything, but just to show you how I started was just literally with one light. So this is this is a software which uh, I use, uh, I used to use when I started learning lighting. Um, it is called Set a Light Studio version two. You can buy it for like two or 300 uh, euros. Uh, the guy who made the software is a friend of mine from Germany. So I have a, a lifetime access to this. Well, so this uh, I simply selected a very common Octabox that you can buy on any store in India or any Chinese shop. So basically AliExpress. Uh, let's see. So just let me just move it a little high. Yeah, somewhere here is fine. So this, okay, on the left side of the screen, uh, you will see the angle. Just, just, just ignore this transform, okay? Just ignore this. You don't have to be super precise with numbers while setting up a light. That's the first rule because ev this is, these kind of things are very useful when you're doing a movie or you are uh, making a, a cinematic uh, sequence that you have to be very precise with the light. But when we are doing photography, we don't really need to be so precise with our light. Okay, there are two major reasons because every inch will give you a different light and a different result. So same thing if I move little onto the right, it will give me a little different approach. If you see on the right side, uh, uh, sorry, on her right, yes, yeah, so on her right, if you see the shadows under the chin, it will constantly keep on changing if I move my light more towards the right side, yeah? And if I move it to the opposite side, this thing will be completely different. What's her chin? So just focus on this area, okay? Just below her chin and on her face, okay? And let me just... Take the reflector and just move it. Give me a second. There we go. Okay. This little cluster. Okay. And I'm just moving reflector out of the equation. Right. Let me just take it back to the normal state. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. I just switched off the reflector. Okay, and I don't know if you guys can see on the webcam or uh, on your screens that the difference with and without reflector 
But it makes a subtle difference, but a lot of people just ignore it because, you know, it's just a subtle difference. No one is going to see it because we're going to upload it on Instagram or Facebook or on our website. So no one really cares. And the person opposite uh, to whom we are showing uh, the photos uh, are not very well experienced or something like that. So don't ever do that because every small detail matters. Every small detail matters. And it is very important to always start with one light always start with one light and then slowly and gradually build it up and that's how everyone learns there is no other way to learn because if you're going to put 10 lights here right now let's say you can afford 10 lights you bought 10 lights here and you just put all the 10 lights and if you don't have any clue about setting them up or understanding what each light does what each reflector does what each modifier does or what uh, what is bouncing the light how to diffuse the light where to light up where not to light up what kind of mood you're aiming for those 10 lights are useless and, and you literally those are useless it's it's equal to trash yeah, regardless, you have Pro Photo, Ellen Chrome, or some Chinese stuff. I'm using Young New Lights all the time, and I don't have any issues with them. And I, I don't really care about Pro Photo or whatever is available. I will create something with that. Yeah. Okay, let's minimize this. Uh, if anyone has questions during this time, or if there are any questions during this time, let's, let's keep asking uh, at the same time. Okay, let's see. Okay, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Shoot, and you never fail to impress. Not to invest in lighting, not mainstream, but offsets. Suggest me some good lighting, even from some China. Okay, so the the cheapest one that right now, the, the cheapest ones on AliExpress. If you write some lights, um, just just simply do your research on AliExpress. I am using Yongnu because let's say Yongnu is uh, the highest brand in Chinese lighting right now, or Godox. Uh, I, I do use sometimes Godox, but um, again, as I said, I'm not really focused on uh, how to uh, find the cheap light. I'm just finding the light right now, which is good enough for me uh, as, um, as what is working best for me. Guys, uh, one quick thing I forgot to, to ask. If you guys want me to do this uh, in Hindi, that's also fine. I'm just doing it in English on purpose. So if, if you guys want Hindi, just let me know. I can start it in Hindi as well. So uh, Yongnu is very good. Godox is very good. And uh, Viltrox or Voltrox, there is another brand which I, I have one of the lights from. Uh, that is also very good lighting. So um, you can always, you know, just go and look what is in your budget and what, uh, what uh, actually works for you. Because for me, young new lights are working, yeah? And for me, wall trucks is working. And I have some, literally even some other cheap lighting that I don't even remember the names. And probably they don't even have any names. I just found it on AliExpress, read the reviews, saw the lighting, read the specs, and just ordered them. Uh, but by the way, it's not a good time to order through AliExpress right now just because of the current situation. Okay. Uh, will this be available to view offline? I'm not sure yet. Uh, probably yes, probably not. So let's stick here. Okay. How can we download this software? Is it available on Google? Yes, it is available on Google, but it is a paid version. Uh, there is no trial version. Uh, so it's a paid version. Uh, can you give basic photography tips? Um, I guess uh, you need to be more clear what exactly you're talking about, about basic photography tips, because uh, it's a very huge genre and uh, there is no basic photography tips. Depending on what you're shooting and what your level is, uh, my basic could be completely different than what you're expecting. You're comfortable in Hindi too, okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Continue with English and sir, what do you say, Mukesh sir, or the team on the chess side? Uh, do, should we continue in Hindi or English? Six, okay, let's see. Just sixty-five percent people say they want it in English. Sixty-five in English. Okay, guys. So English, but you can also write your questions in Hindi, and it is very important for you guys to uh, you know, understand that photography is not just about knowing your camera or knowing the light or knowing how to do it and how to retouch it in Photoshop or Lightroom. It is very, very, very important 
to be a full part of the uh, of the photo shoot. So 360 degree circles, you have to guide your model how to pose. You have to pose because let's face it, 90% of uh, the viewers right now are not working with super professional models or very highly expensive equipment or a team. So the person standing opposite to you might be a, a, a girl you found on Instagram or a guy you found on Instagram, a friend or a sister uh, or a girlfriend or someone. Yeah, so someone that isn't really um, okay in front of camera. So it is very important that you tell them because you are the one who's supposed to be more professional. You are the one with the more knowledge. So you're supposed to guide them how to pose. Yeah, look at the shadows. After every shot, try changing the settings and see what you can do. Try to, uh, making her pose to the right, to the left. When I start making a, a model pose, I literally start um, making her pose from, let's see. Let me just move this little back. Okay, mm -hmm. so I start making her pose from right and then I slowly, slowly, slowly start making her move towards the left. And that's how I find a sweet spot where I think the best lighting uh, I'm getting or the best uh, pose I'll get or what is the best uh, way I could uh, show the model as, as professional as possible or, you know, uh, show my lighting to the fullest because lighting will make a difference if the model is posing in different directions. So you are setting a light for a model to pose, let's say towards camera left. And suddenly model poses towards camera right, it completely changes the lighting. And I'll show you it in the next setup. Give me one second, let me just open the project. Discard, okay, three light setup. Let's see. Now this comes into little more, uh, this I did like three months ago. Uh, I don't know wh why I was doing that, but I just did it just to just to show to you guys. Give me a second. Let me just post the studio. Okay, so this is like the classic setup that I do, and uh, I, I I'm pretty sure a lot of people notice this light uh, setup that I'm doing very often. Just ignore the lights, okay? I don't use these lights. Just ignore the lights. I was just checking the newer version of the software that uh, introduced some extra lights and stuff. So just ignore the lights, okay? So the whole point was that I'm using four lights here right now, okay? And let me switch off all the lights and I will start by one by one and explain you guys. Okay, so basically right now, this is the studio light. So wherever we are in studio, okay? The, what camera sees will be on the right side, okay? So since we are on F10 here, so the camera literally sees nothing because the light in the studio is so less, okay? But this is just to show you. I can switch out the studio lights and it will be completely dark, yeah? So let's say studio lights are fully on. So I start with my key light, which will be mostly lighting my model. So that will be this light. So key light is usually the one where you would like your model to look towards. It does not have always has to be next to the camera or above camera. If the model is posing in such a way that she is looking like through the window somewhere out, like in a deep horizon or something, so the key light will be in the front of window coming inside towards the model. Okay, so this is my key light. I have already applied a gel on it. So some kind of greenish cyan tint on this. So now, it's very important how to position. Yeah, so I move it back and forth. This red line on the right uh, that you see is the one that is telling where my light is falling on the model. So what I'm looking right now is just to have enough light so I can see it in her eyes. Yeah, so most important is how can I see it in her eyes? Here I can check the intensity of the light. Here is the color. The colors can be any end because we're working in Photoshop later on or in Lightroom uh, for post-processing. So we can always manipulate the colors, but don't depend on it. Get it as close as possible to uh, to the perfect uh, vision that you had for the light setup or for the, let's say, or for the uh, image or the pose or whatever you were having in mind initially to create. Okay, so my key light is ready, but I already noticed that there's a lot of shadows underneath. Yeah, the, the lower torso and the legs and the thighs are not lit properly. She's wearing dark clothes, which is intentionally. She's wearing a leather jacket, which is also intention, intentionally uh, uh, put onto the model because it is reflecting light. 
And if anyone knows my style, I am a big, big, big sucker for a uh, for uh, reflective lights, yeah, I, I just like reflection everywhere. It could be water, it could be. That's why I shoot mostly in bathrooms because there is a lot of reflection around, uh, and I try to keep uh, my uh, models with uh, close to water or something on the other, yeah. So I see already that there is a lot of shadows underneath it. So I am going to introduce another light from down. Okay, I am not going to explain the color theory why I am using these colors. If if someone does not know right now the color theory, uh, the best is to uh, basically go online and check the color theory. Just simply write color theory for photography and you'll see a color wheel. You'll see every color opposite uh, is a complementary color. Basically, as a human eye, uh, as, as we humans see, we have certain colors that are pleasing to our mind. I don't know the biological point of view, but it looks pleasing to our eyes. And that's the difference between just a normal lighting and a gel lighting with the complementary colors. You see it everywhere. You see it in American movies. You see it in... Uh, let me see if I can find the references. I do have some screenshots. Like I, I, whenever I'm watching a movie, I simply pick up a color. Yeah. So if you see, just this is a screenshot from a movie. I forgot the name already. I guess it's called Game or something. So this is all blue, 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 blue. And but you see, there is still a little orange, and that orange adds such a big deal of interest in the image it gives the depth to the image yeah like that i i am taking screenshots all the time when i'm watching movies that's a scene from joker it's more cinematic but you see the theory is still same the in intensity luminosity saturation of the colors are very different but you see there is still an orange there is still a shade of yellow there is still cyan and yeah? there is still a white light so these kind of things are very important and you you get to know you start to notice them once you once you are actually uh, very used to seeing light so you start seeing it in movies so like this is this is more complicated color scheme yeah this is blue magenta orange and it works it looks good to us yeah it is pleasing to us it's not like disturbing you don't really feel like oh my god i can't stare it or something like that this is whole another color theory but this is like on a very 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 large scale but that that's how you notice these color themes and uh, with time you will notice again if you see there is very common this this you will find in american movies all the time blue orange and in shadows uh, a very very dark uh, dark blue so this comes with practice and this comes with time so don't worry about that you will understand it yeah but all you need to do is not try to be a famous instagrammer or not try to be a very quick uh, let's say don't try to like, just climb the ladders quickly as quickly as possible just give me one second let me see something more if i have okay so uh color theory is very important even if you're shooting portraits it is still very important i will show you some of my old works for example here this is this is not old, but this is fairly new. There is still a color theory. The shadows are little magenta and red. There is already so many colors here. There's blue, and blue always go with yellow, so that's why her skin tone is more saturated. She has red hair or close to red hair, so I made it more intense. So there's still color between orange and blue. Yeah, and let me show you some like really old work if I can reach out to there. So if you see all my images have something in common, that is that I'm always using a color theory. Let's see, I'm trying to find some natural portraits that I used to shoot. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm doing uh, photo editing with color theory from almost uh, four or five years. So for example, this, she's already wearing something in the red range. So that's the reason I turned the lights behind her more towards the cyan range. Uh, I don't know where is the before and after of this, but okay. Let's see, let's go more back, more back. Like there is some really shitty work that I did, but again, that's part of, you know, growing up. Yeah, you learn, you learn with the, you know, failed works. And I guess there is a good example somewhere here. Mm -hmm. I even did some black and whites back in the days. OK, 
Okay. Okay, it does not go below this for some reason. It's not loading. Anyways, so this is one of my first images that I did uh, with the gels. Not the best one, but again, and see, I, I also did that stupid thing, adding such a big logo, because, you know, that, that makes it uh, more cool and that makes me a more professional photographer if I have a logo, but that really does not work, trust me. You're just ruining your own image. Now, this setup i just did with one table lamp which is on the left and there is just one speed light literally on the floor that's all and she's already wearing red so it already gave me tri colors yeah so this is very important to see what is available to you you don't really need to have all that expensive equipment for example this is a bathroom this is literally a bathroom in a restaurant where we went for a pizza and i saw such a great awesome this uh, really magenta lights tubes uh, that were already installed there and we literally posed there without any external lights so everything is around you and trust me in india there are shit lot of lights everywhere and you can do that this is literally a street and this is like super cool places that you can find even in india i have some some from india also but again, so a lot of people tell me that, okay, because you are living abroad, you have a lot of neon signs or stuff like that, but you know, you, you, you don't really have to do that because you know, you can create it with anything. This setup, I, if I have the backstage here, um, no, I don't have the backstage here, but this, this was the craziest setup that I did. So there is one speed light. This is like a stand uh, with the, the mesh. So there's a light behind it. And these are two table lamps on the right, which I pointed towards her. And rest is, as you see, she already has red glasses, red lipstick, and the black outfit. And it did a pretty good job for me. Okay, let's see what else we have here. Mm -hmm. Nope. I'm trying to find a backstage. Do I have the second account here? Okay, maybe. Oh yeah, I can show you here quickly. Okay, okay, where is it? This is one of the complex photo shoots uh, with the complex lighting. So there were, were quite a lot of lightings here uh, to light up this shot, but uh, we'll not get into that right now. Uh, yeah, that's the one. Okay, so there is a light here, one speed light, so one normal flashlight, okay? This is the stand for the candle, so you put candle inside it, okay? So I use this stand to create the shadows on her face, okay? There is one table lamp here, that's all. No fancy equipment, nothing, and she's sitting next to the bed. That's all. And as easy as that, you can create something. So there, there is nothing that you cannot create without fancy equipments. Anyways, getting back to our original light setup. So we have two lights. I use cyan as my key light and I'm using orange uh, or the warm light uh, as my, let's say, fill light. So you see without this one, if you see under her chin, without this light, uh, okay, yeah. Without this light, this is literally nothing. Yeah, this light is adding something to her lower body. Yeah, and then making two strip boxes or the strip lights to add from each side. More interesting light. Yeah, and this this is just the initial way how you light a straight sit standing model in a studio. You can use the same setup for like many, 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 many other lights. For example, mm, this light, yeah, this, there is like, there are two lights in the fridge, inside the fridge with yellow gels. There is one light which is on her right. So from this side, there is cyan light from up and there is a yellow light also coming from down, which is lighting the model. Yeah, if I could, yeah, I guess, if, you, if I could show it, yeah. So one light is right above me. As simple as that, yeah, and I'll show you. So this is just a technique that I'm showing you that you can use these lights. 
Same goes for this. This is just three lights. One light is in the sink here, which is lighting up. So in front of our body, there are two lights, which are which are uh, angled towards the roof because the roof was very low. So the roof is diffusing the light and not making it harsh enough. Simple as that. So you see my photos are almost right from the camera. So I'm not really, you know, doing a lot of post-processing anymore. And let's see what else we have so this orange and uh, blue light setup you can always use in as many uh, as many uh, ways as possible here i did not even use the secondary light here is this natural light there is a, a lamp above the um, whew, mirror so i used it as a my key light yeah and from down i just put one light with the blue gel and that's all nothing special just one light setup and I was carrying at least six lights here right now during this shoot. Same goes for here. There were not a lot of lights, one, two. So here I used two lights basically. One is from the left, one is from the right, two colors, and the third color was already in the frame in the, in the bathroom. So if you know how to look for the lights, it's very easy. Yeah, you don't really have to, uh, let's say, uh worry about you know um, that you don't have something expensive to to do or something this light is done this there is no light here just to be very obvious the this is a showroom window this is a showroom window if i could only find no nope, there is none this is a showroom window and this flare that you see this is added in post processing that's all uh, or i guess it was uh, with the prison or something like that so as simple as that okay and yeah you see i have tried everything again the classic example the light setup that we're talking about this is the classic example of that light setup this is like the easiest one that that you can do there are more complex this is again the same setup uh, with the same lighting style the neon thing is added in post-processing this is a body paint I was working for a body paint guy and as you see the raw is really dark but again it's not that hard to retouch these images and let's see anything else okay so as you see as simple as that let me switch off the studio lights here okay and that's how basically the light setup will look like and it's up to you how you guys can use it for your own style or for lighting up your own mood or uh, own um, let's say own setup or own inspiration whatever you have but this is like a classic step i'm not saying that every time you have to have like four lights to light up this set it could be only two lights as i showed you the, the complement there are two colors which complement each other and that's the most important part so always watch out for that yeah okay let's see if we have any questions already a second mm -hmm. i completely continue with okay uh what size of softbox would be good at the beginning level uh deepak uh, it totally depends uh, what you are shooting and, and what kind of uh, images you are interested in if you are interested in natural light uh, photos and you want to introduce additional uh, light uh, in your natural light photos uh, then uh, octa box is good so a very simple rule the bigger the box the more softer the light the smaller the box the more harsh the light so if you're looking for something super contrasty you go for small uh, small uh, diffuser or small modifiers if you're looking for something very subtle very moody very soft then you go for big octa boxes okay uh -huh. okay can we have recording of the session later uh okay yeah so they are yeah so you can buy it uh, as you already said okay Mm -hmm. You can check on the top where it says show unanswered. Oh, yeah. Wait, uh, where is it? Show unanswered. But I have not answered any actually. I've not clicked on that. Uh -huh. Okay. I have to start marking the questions in order to this be answered. 
okay this is depending upon that so shooting location is it possible to simulate a similar location in this software i mean suppose the location is closed space yes in this software you can do that well i'm not gonna go deep into this um, you can see right now i'm using small room you can go for medium you can go for large the, the, the possibilities are infinite so i'm not gonna go very deep into this uh, uh, software again this is just a tool to learn this is not a tool that will improve your photography yeah, so I will be honest with you. When I was uh, studying, I had access to a studio for almost a year uh, for free. So I was like literally trying it with every single light. I have done shoots with just one sh strip box. So again, the tools are not important. It's how you practice, how much you practice. Uh, till date, I can I always go on YouTube and just find out any videos to learn from. So it could be like frequency separation. Let's see what's new in frequency separation in 2020 because I learned it in 2011 or 12. Still nothing new, but it's worth going and checking. It's about the curiosity to keep on, you know, updating yourself. It's not about that. Yeah, I know frequency separation is the same shit, yeah? So it's it's not about that. So it's always about how, how much you want to learn. For me, when I want to learn something, I am like a stubborn guy. When I see something and I don't know how to do that, I will keep on doing that. And the gel lighting I saw somewhere, I don't know where exactly, but I was doing the gel lighting for two years before I actually perfected the first shot that I ever took with the gels. What would be the camera setting? I'm not going to ask answer this question as I again explained that the camera settings are completely irrelevant to tell or to, it, it is not, it is someone telling you put your finger here, 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 here on the guitar and you'll be able to play the guitar. That That's that's the question that you're literally asking right now. Okay, uh, softbox, I already answered. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh -huh. other than Photoshop Lightroom for sharpening as I could not get in interpretation. For sharpening, uh, I, I literally only use uh, Photoshop for sharpening uh, and sometimes I can use clarity in uh, Lightroom. So it's, um, uh, that's the max I do because uh, again, it, it is about, you can take, a, you can sharp an image, but if it is not taken properly, there's no use of sharpening the image or you can use any software, it will not recover the image. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, I'm using fashion photo shoots and other lens I should buy right now. Um, I guess I started with 50, I started with 1855 from Nikon with the D3100. And uh, my first lens that I purchased was 51.8. It is perfect lens. You can use it uh, and uh, stick with that. Trust me, stick with that. Get yourself first uh, good with that. There is no harm in buying other lenses, but um, what's the point of investing money into that rather than uh, going and learning through some tutors or some courses or something like that? So invest in your knowledge, not in your equipment. Okay. Okay, I I was using um, Canon 60 for last four or five years, and in last uh, November I moved to Canon uh, RP. What's the difference between uh, flashlight and continuous light? The name explains it very easily. So the flashlight flashes and it is way stronger, and the constant lights uh, are constant and they are less stronger. Uh, in regards to their output. Thanks for session. On what basis we are invited for webinar? I'm not sure I get your question. Is Godox V1 good for starting period or I can do enough with cheaper? You can do literally a lot with cheaper lights. Don't have to go with the brand. Trust me, I'm not trying, I'm not here to uh, promote any specific brand. Just shoot what you have. Just shoot with what is in your camera bag. Don't aim for something expensive with your friend or with your colleague or with some famous uh, Instagrammer is advertising. Just shoot with what you have. Uh, DSLR video training. Uh, there won't be any DSLR video training. I 
doubt it is practically possible to show DSLR settings and stuff like that. So there are workshops for that. Uh, you can contact uh, Chess team. They are usually organizing quite a bit of workshops. So, uh, okay, give an example how you use basic lighting outdoor in a sunny day. Uh, for a sunny day, I don't really shoot in sun very often, at least for now, I used to. Um, so during that time, I'm using only two uh, two reflectors uh, slash diffusers. So if I'm shooting in a, on a sunny day, I tend to shoot around one or two when the sun is more or less somewhere on this height towards my face. So I'm using um, a diffuser to diffuse the light uh, for the model. So basically it becomes my key light. And then I'm using a small reflector from underneath, which becomes as a filler light to light up these areas for the model. Okay, Photoshop or uh, Affinity Photo. I have no idea about the second software Mukherjee, so might be something like Photoshop. I'm using Photoshop, so I don't really, I won't research anything unless I really want to buy or unless I really want to switch. So like, for example, I'm using Premiere Pro for uh, just learning purposes and I'm thinking of moving to Final Cut Pro. So that's why I'm researching Final Cut Pro. But besides that, I don't really uh, research like Lightroom or Capture One. I'm comfortable with Lightroom, so I'm using Lightroom. If I ever tend to change to Capture One, then I'll start learning about Capture One and start uh, digging a little more about Capture One. I wanted to join workshop on 19 and I connected Chess, but uh, yeah, yeah, it was sold out. It was oversold out. Well, uh, I guess uh, maybe next time, whenever it happens after the coronavirus. Uh, hopefully uh, next workshop, I guess in 2021, because I guess it is not safe to do any mass events or even travel right now in 2020. So in 2021, uh, probably I'll be in India once again. Uh, and uh, we'll be planning another workshop with the cheese guys. Mm. Okay. What are techniques of using softbox or other lights for outdoor shoot? There are not really any techniques. Again, you have to just understand what you are aiming for, you, what you are, uh, let's say, uh, going for in order to, uh, how do you say that? In order to, let's say, what is the end result you're expecting, right? If you're expecting something uh, harsh, then uh, there is no point of using uh, the octa box because it is going to give you something very soft if you're aiming for something soft and there's no point of using bare flash example example of what i did not understand speed light okay guys you need to be a little more clear with your questions because uh, it would be easy for me to answer in the meanwhile let's move on to our uh, let's see third light setup and the final one for today so if you guys have any questions regarding this uh, light setup, you can uh, you can uh, simply ask right now uh, if you have anything related to this specific setup. Yeah, otherwise, I'll give you five minutes. If you have anything related to this, then otherwise we'll move to the next one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, well, Mehera, uh, the thing is that uh, I was also not a very big fan of studio lighting, but since I was living in Poland uh, and in Central Europe, uh, the weather, you don't really get a very good weather outdoor. So the sunny time or the summer is like two months only, and you cannot create content in two months for the whole year. So that is one of the reasons I was pushed to uh, indoor shoots. And once I, I still hate them because I, I'm, I'm mostly working alone and I have to carry everything myself to the location or in the car uh, or from the car. So I kind of hate, uh, hate it. Um, so it's, 
it's something that uh, you know works for me uh, i over time i have figured out the ways to move my equipment have different kind of you know ways of carrying them and uh, different kind of equipment which are smaller and giving me the most output accordingly so i don't really carry very expensive um, or very big lights i just carry a small but many lights so i just have like a quite big box which i can just hold it in my hand and i can just carry it to every location Yes, you can use fairy lights as well, the Brandon Waffle style. Yes, uh, I did that too. Fairy lights uh, work fantastically uh, with the external lights. But again, uh, you have to be, there is a balance because fairy lights is a small LEDs or small kind of, you know, lights. And when you're using flash, flash is very strong compared to these lights. So flash can like wash these uh, lights or the good color of these lights. So I would recommend using it with the natural light or the available light. How to set up a speed light? Uh, very difficult question. There is, uh, every speed light has different settings, but the basic setting is just switch it on. I mean, I don't know how to explain this to you because I don't know what exactly you are asking it for. The setup is different. Every setup is different. How, sir, how can we use a single light with multiple purposes? Well, uh, there is an easy way. Let me show you. Mm -hmm. Open project. We'll go back to the first one quickly. Octa. Okay. So just look at the image right now, okay? So this is a fully lit body shot. Yeah, from bottom till top, she is fully lit and properly exposed. Yeah. And now let's say I can bring it a little more down. Okay. This becomes little high key. Yeah, I can increase the power. It will become more of like a high key shot. So as you see, it is more bright, washing up everything. Uh, let's take this light a little more towards right. Okay. Let's take this light. Oh, come on. Oh, okay. Where is the light? Oh, yeah. Here it is. So we take this light a little more towards her right. Okay. And we reduce the light a little. Here goes your little. I'm just showing it in a very quick version, okay? So, little more here. And there goes your moody shot. Yeah. If you want to fill it, you obviously you don't need a. You don't need another uh, light because you can just simply have. I guess this is the very common reflector that you can get. We are looking for, let's see, this cheap reflector. Okay, and we're going to move it a little back. Okay, now we're just going to angle it towards our model. Okay. Here we go. And here you go. So from what we had initially, we just lighted up the model with basically, which looks like two lights, but which actually is one light. So you see how much difference does the reflector make from here to here. And the reflectors could be silver, golden, whatever look you're aiming for, and it will it will be completely you know different thing. So and this is the way that I mean, see anywhere you move the light, it will give you different results. Yeah, and if you take this light and let's say put it here, let's say close enough, and I will move it a little up and focus it from up to down. Mm -hmm. And instead of reflector, if I use something like this and put it down, and turn it on up. Mm -hmm. Okay, turn it all up and focus it on my model's face. Here we go. There's another look with the little shades on her right or left. So every time you move a single light, it will give you something. All you need is one reflector, one light. Could be could be a single octa, could does not have to be even octa. Okay, let's see. I'm trying to check something. 
if I can find. Okay, anyways. Cool. Okay, let's open our third project, Discord Changes. And this is a little more complex. And this you will, this I on purpose just did with speed lights. So all of these are speed lights. There is no specific brand. You can use any speed light. Yeah, let me switch off everything and so I can show you how everything is being set up. Okay, so first and because I was aiming, this is a predetermined shot, yeah? So I am aiming for a flushed out magenta background, yeah? So I just took one speed light. Okay, let's see if I can go behind here. Okay. So right behind the model. Okay. So right behind the model, there is a speed light, which basically means that we are trying to okay, go more, go more, go more. So just one speed light. This is literally helping me to make a gray or a white background, a magenta background. Okay, so coming back to this, then I will always start, whenever, you're, whenever you want a background which has to be colored, I always recommending using gray or white. Uh, I usually personally use gray if I'm shooting in studio uh, or usually the bathrooms here in Europe are mostly white. So it does the job for me as well. Then I'm going to set up my key light. There comes my key light. Again, the same principle. Yeah, always start with your key light. But in this case, we had to first prepare our background. And I'm doing it only with speed lights because speed lights are the cheapest to buy right now on any market. In any market, you can buy speed lights cheaper. Yeah, so this is this is not a fancy Ellen Chrome or Pro Photo or whatever other brands there are. So these are like Young News, six or 7,000 uh, rupees or something around that uh, speed lights. Yeah, let's set up the zoom. So here is my another speed light. And these are, remember, these are bare speed lights. There are no diffusers, there are no modifiers. So I'm just doing it with the bare speed light, which will be strong. So you have to be very careful. So these are strong, but I start with one light at a time. Yeah, so these are bare speed lights because I am taking a scenario that you just have speed light or speed lights you borrowed from friend or from somewhere or you rented it and you have these speed lights. And now you want to create something which which we which we are seeing on the screen right now. So you don't have any modifier, you don't have any other uh, any other diffusers or anything. So we'll just create similar thing that I would create with a really fancy equipment with just a normal speed light. Yeah. Now coming back to another light. So I add another light. It adds a very little difference, but it still is going to add up to the whole image. If you see on the right side of the model, I'll switch it on and off. So it's adding just a tint of orange on her right. And then another one. And let's see. And the final one again. So see, this is if you if you remember, this is similar as the last setup, but without any diffusers, without any strip boxes, without any octa, it is just bare speed light. And the third speed light, the fifth speed light is from down here. So if I try to show you the view, new snap. So basically, that's the view from the top. One, two, three, four, five speed lights. And this is the camera. So it is, I will be sharing these plans with you. So don't worry about all the three setups that we are talking right now about. I will be sharing these plans with you. And basically this is the thing. And here are the camera settings, lens, anything. And this could be done with everything. Every kind of lens, every kind of camera, because you're not really aiming for F1.2, 1.4, this is F1.8. So every, literally even 1855 lens can give you this same results if you have one so the equipment is not an issue all you need is a light right so 
as I explained earlier, that the same things can be created with speedlight, same things can be created with the, the expensive Proforo or the diffusers or the strip box or any any other any other thing uh, like that. But again, the whole point of today's uh, video is not to sh not to let's say uh, let's say not to discourage you or not to let uh, it's the whole point is to let you guys know that. The things can be created with whatever is available. I started with one Yongnu 685. That's the model I was having when I bought. Uh, and with that, I built up with the other lights slowly and steadily. And I did it over years. It's not that I just got money and I suddenly just went and bought like four or five lights. Slowly and steadily, I started buying uh, lights. What? Uh, fulfills my requirements so currently when i'm shooting the maximum lights i use is six and that's the maximum lights i have so i don't need eight or nine because i think because that's uh, more professional the more lights you have you more professional you look. so i'm using um sigma 50 mm 1.4 it's not an art series uh, then the canon 35 rf 1.8 and then I'm using 100 mm Canon 2.8. So these are the lenses that does the job for me. For someone else, it might be 85 mm. I used 85 mm, I wasn't happy with the results. So I used uh, can, uh, 100 mm. I know people are like 100 mm are like micro lens or ma uh, macro lenses or something like that. But again, the, the limitation is in your mind. The limitation is in your head. It's not uh, in your equipment or um, uh, if you have a 10,000 uh, rupees camera or 50,000 rupees camera, or if you have Sony mirrorless or Canon uh, mirrored camera or whatever the camera you're using. So this is uh, something that you need to, the day you understand that, that you do not need fancy equipment uh, for, uh, for the, creating something that's the day you will actually start creating something and that's the same thing i i showed uh, in in the workshop uh, that um, you don't really need uh, everything that you think you need because the more stuff you will include in your bag the more complicated your life is going to be and trust me i know that because i'm working with multiple things and multiple equipments all the time okay let's get back to the questions and let's see mm -hmm. Okay, single light question till here we answered, yeah. Okay. Okay, so how can you learn a DSLR? That's the simplest question. There is a thing called YouTube. I learned my DSLR from there. I'm pretty sure you can also learn from there. There is no one in this world who can explain you how to use your own camera. It's only you. And I am using Canon EOS RP and uh, I only know 30% of the settings in that camera because I am literally using 30% of the settings. I don't need to go into and be a bookworm and read the whole manual to understand what my camera can do because I don't need it. I'm not going to waste my energy on learning something that I will not use. I'm going to use my energy in learning something and improving something that I'm doing on daily basis. Yeah, so how to balance light, how to balance uh, the white balance manually, how to use Kelvins, how to use shutter speed, how can I shoot on a lower shutter speed, how can I make some stuff at home so I don't have to invest money. That's where I will uh, spend my time, not learning uh, a DSLR, because at the end of the day, no one is going to take an exam uh, for me. A model is not going to ask me, hey, tell me what is the focal length on this camera? What is the ring size in this camera? The client is not looking for that. Client is looking if you can create the work. Yes, DSLR, everyone can get. Amazon, you can get. Everyone can get the DSLR. You can get it even on the installments or EMIs in right now. So it's not a very big deal owning a DSLR. It's about how much you know your DSLR and how much you know for what you are doing. It's it's not about that my DSLR can shoot this, 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 this. My DSLR can shoot 4K video. Yes, my DSLR can shoot 4K video, but I don't give a shit about that because I'm never going to use it because I don't shoot videos. It's good to have, but it wasn't the primary reason I bought the camera. The primary reason for buying a uh, mirrorless was that I was using heavy lens and uh, I had a, a wrist pain. So I simply decided to uh, go for a, a lighter weight camera. I don't see any difference between 60 and the RP. So for me, it is potato patara kind of situation, you know? Okay.
Uh, I don't use any uh, plugins in Photoshop right now. Uh, I guess there was one called uh, one from Google. It was called uh, Color FX or something like that. Uh, but there are not really a lot of colors in that. But I do all the coloring manually. I do it uh, by my uh, Lightroom presets that I have prepared. Uh, I'm mostly using my Lightroom presets and it's like uh, bam, one time and I'm done with that. Um, Yes, I will be sharing the PDFs uh, with everyone who is in the live uh, of the setups that we talked about today. So we'll do that after the video ends. Mm -hmm. Post-processing is something uh, that is very personal um, in regards to that every photographer builds up his or her post-processing um, uh, according to what they're shooting. So what I am shooting uh, might be something that you might be interested in, but the post-processing might be something completely different. I can teach you how to do the post-processing. But uh, someone who's shooting exactly like me might like the photos a little more less saturated. I like it very contrasty. So even if I'm telling you to dial 20 into this slider, 13 to this slider, you won't not like the results because you might be aiming for something little less contrasty or little more contrasty. So everyone has their individual taste in that. Um, I learned post-processing uh, literally on YouTube, uh, but again, it's it's been like six or seven years since I've been learning and I'm still learning. So uh, this is something that you cannot really be, uh, or you cannot ever say that uh, you are mastering something because uh, the knowledge is, you know, infinite. So you don't really have that stopping point, you know, that, hey, I learned. I know everything. No, I still get images that I'm retouching uh, for my clients that I have no clue. And then I quickly go on YouTube and try to figure out different tutorials. And between like 10 tutorials, there will be someone telling the thing that exactly I want to know for like 30 seconds. So after watching 10 different tutorials, I will find something for 30 seconds. But that's that's the way that I put attention to my work. Yeah, that's not that I'm just going to be like, ah, oh, they won't notice this. So just leave it. Uh, specifications between speed lights and continuous lights. There are the major one is that speed lights are much, much, much more stronger. So if you're shooting in a daylight, uh, the continuous light are kind of practically impossible unless you're using these gigantic halogen lights, uh, which are used on movie sets. So uh, the small LED lights, these are not uh, going to work outdoor. Uh, these are mostly for indoor shots. What like uh, can you suggest some name whose work we can follow for creative indoor lighting? Well, uh, I follow a lot of people, but I don't really uh, remember names like that. Uh, just go and check my following and see anyone's work you like. You can just follow them. Uh, what is the light I can use for outdoor shoot during golden hour? I guess during golden hour you don't really need a light. You just need a reflector. Uh, pro preferably a white one that would uh, be a good one so you don't really need an external light but if you still need the external light go for any speed light with the octa box uh let's see for choosing models uh it totally depends what my client or what my idea is yeah so it's it's never about uh, just finding a pretty girl because uh, that will not lead you anywhere and trust me i have tried that um so it's more about you know um, the idea and the expressions right now um the model portfolio that i like to see when i'm uh, sent models are usually how good her expressions are the first thing i see is expressions if the expressions are not good and her body is fantastic nothing will change trust me nothing will change yeah and i don't even post 
those photos where I think that the expressions are not good enough for, for the idea or for the situation. So it is very important to see how good the model can, um, uh, let's say, uh, you know, make expressions, can deliver the mood in the images, because I'm doing my job with setting up the lights and setting up the mood and setting up the location and everything and all. But if model cannot deliver that uh, by her face, uh, then all of that is useless. There is no, there is no point. You know, it's the same as a movie. If the person cannot act, and you can make the best set, you can take them to the best location. Uh, there, there, there is no point of you know uh, shooting because you're just wasting your time and her time. Basically, you're wasting more of your time because later you have to go home and you're obliged to edit them and send it to her or to your client. <laughs> So I will instead prefer to wait and find a better model rather than shooting tomorrow with someone. Yes, I came to India in Jan and, and I will be coming back to India hopefully after the coronavirus thing is uh, gone. Uh, what is the color theory and when should we go for it? Color theory, uh, you need to Google. It's a very big and very vast concept. Uh, and when should you use it? I guess you should use it every time. Color theory is used in every single part of creativity, from designing a poster to designing uh, designing uh, the outfits everywhere. So as a photographer, where you should focus is use your colors or use the color theory uh, with the, the location versus the model's outfit. If you're just shooting natural door, natural outdoor and then use the same concept into your retouching so if you're adding science to the highlights add uh, magenta or red to the shadows and midtones something like that so you have to just uh, you know practice it it takes a lot of time to understand exactly what color goes with what and it it is all about training your eyes it's nothing that i will tell you so add cyan here and add magenta here and bam your photo is going to be great with the toning it doesn't work like that lighting could be different um, the outfits could be different the background might have something which is uh, destroying the color theory uh, so it, it is important mm, okay <laughs> So much black and white uh, photos in the fashion. Well, um, I I really like black and white uh, personally, but uh, recently what I have noticed in black and white is that anyone who is unable to understand the lighting properly is uh, aiming to become a black and white photographer. Two reasons, you don't really have to worry about tones because there are no tones. And second, you can do it uh, anywhere. Just it's a matter of applying one preset to every image and you uh, you become a black and white photographer. But again, black and white is very important to convey the mood. But the, the current fashion photographers, and I'm literally talking about uh, the uh, current trend of black and white in India, which has gone way too far because it is just about applying a specific preset to every image but there is no mood there is no concept there is uh, no theme there is no inspiration and that's all so in my opinion it doesn't really uh, make sense but again it's an easy way to you know um, make yourself identifying identified in in a crowd of instagrammers or a crowd of photographers who are much 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 more better than you uh, so if it is working for you as a marketing stunt, why not? Uh, depending on what lens you're using with 7D, I used 7D for uh, quite a long time before I had 60. So uh, if you are having some good, uh, because 7D is a crop sensor, if I remember correctly. Uh, so it should have 50 mm will be approximately 85 mm on that uh, on the crop sensor so i guess it's a good combination if you have 50 with it uh, and uh, if you have uh, sony mirrorless i have never used sony so don't please ask me about that for me sony doesn't make sense for two reasons that i don't want a 42 megapixel file or 42 uh, mb file or 50 mb file because most of my clients will never understand that deep value and it's increasing um, my my 
my work because 42 megabyte file has a lot of information. And when you're retouching a photo, all this information has to be properly managed. Yeah, you have to retouch to the very detail. Why the hell I should increase my own work by just getting a camera which is going to just double my work and instead and, and in fact i'm paying more money to buy that camera just because it's in trend so don't worry about what is the megapixel of the camera or whatever uh, the quality is quality comes with your lighting quality comes with your perspective remember that like for example right now if you see my instagram i'm shooting photos on uh, the webcam so it is literally same shit and there is no quality in that, but there is some mood. There is some, uh, you know, idea behind it. So it is just a webcam series, but it is still there. It is still working. I don't care how sharp is it. I don't care how bright the eyes are. All I care is how good model is posing, how good she's uh, conveying the mood of the whole uh, whole thing. Okay, I guess there are no more questions. Okay, let's see. And uh, what else? If you guys have any questions related to any images on my Instagram, uh, go ahead and ask about that. And I will try to, um, let's say, answer that. I can share my Instagram here if it's possible. Yep. Or you guys can simply check my Instagram and let me know right now. We'll be answering uh, all the questions because um, I prepared three setups for you guys and uh, I am pretty much done with it uh, on my end. Let me see. Mm, there they are. Screenshots off. So I will be sharing these files with you guys. Let's see, one is this, the one light setup. The settings are dialed in here. The camera settings are here. The light settings are here. Just ignore these settings. This is all to show you guys what and how the lights are being positioned. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see. Where is it? Uh -huh. Okay, I'm using D850 with 85 for portrait shoots. And uh, the raw file is very big. So do you suggest to take a picture in JPEG or raw? No, I always suggest to take photo in uh, raw. But what I did is, uh, I'm not sure about uh, Nikon, but in uh, Canon, there is an option for a small, medium and large raw. So I switched my camera to medium raw because uh, it doesn't make sense for me to, you know, build up a file for 20, 30 megabyte every time I'm taking a shot. For what? I mean, most of my clients are going to use it on their website or on their Instagram. Yeah. And if I'm doing a portrait, uh, if I'm doing a poster shoot or a magazine shoot, then I'm using it uh, for, for the magazines. I'm still using my uh, large raw format. But if I'm doing a poster or a billboard shoot, then I'm doing it. Uh, I just rent a phase one camera and I do shoots with phase one because it's better to rent it rather than own it, because that thing is a very expensive piece of equipment. OK. Okay, let's see. Do I know anyone from the live already, personally? Nope, I don't think so, I know anyone. Okay. Uh, 
honestly uh, sort of uh, i just rent anyone which is available in the shop because uh, that's basically it doesn't really matter to me or for me it matters is the uh, file size and the uh, image quality because eventually if you're doing a poster shoot uh, you are usually doing it uh, in studio so everything is in a very controlled environment so again the camera is just because the image will be expanded to a very 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 large scale so um, that's the only reason uh, I'm going for the phase one cameras uh, if I have to I guess I rented it like four or five times uh, when I saw uh, saw an issue with uh, my current camera uh, when I was having this poster uh, printouts. Okay, how does a new photographer practice this in real life? A uh, new photographer practice this in real life. You mean if you mean the light setups, then obviously you need to borrow lights. You need to uh, you need to have um, something. Let's say you need to have some lights to start with. Otherwise, just for the beginning, you can always start with natural light portraits. That's how I started. Many times they are blank about creative ideas. Many times they're blank about creative ideas. I'm not sure, sure if I understand that. I'm, I'm only talking about billboards. And mostly I'm, I'm, I'm doing shoots here uh, with actually, mostly I'm doing shoots here with the, the uh, Lingri brands because that's my expertised area. And that's where, uh, that's what people approach me for. And the uh, rest is my online workshops or my uh, group workshops uh, that, that are happening. But the group workshops are kind of, you know, not possible in this time of the year. Give me a second. Mm -hmm. Uh, online workshop uh, does not really happen in group guys so just to be very clear online workshop is one on one so people reach out to me and I we just decide the time and date and the payment and that's all. Uh, let's see. Okay. So. Wait, are these questions being moved or what is happening? I can't understand, I guess. Okay. Um, well, you would have to reach out to me on my Instagram and rest uh, everything you can see there. Okay, guys, so quickly, if you have any questions, uh, I'm here for next uh, approximately half an hour more. So feel free to ask questions about the light setups that we did today or um, uh, the uh, equipment and everything. I'm just trying to think if I can show you anything more without, uh, let's see. Mm. Oh, this I did like a few days ago just to, to show to you guys that this is literally the same setup that I did uh, and this is the result in real life uh, and you know every time it is a different so she, if she will post left or right it will be completely different um, uh, setup I think I can show you guys some backstage if I have let's see if I have mm, nope mm -hmm. where are my backstages okay sir backstage the kind of if okay sir can uh, hear me or anyone from organizing team please go ahead uh, let people decide like you have a couple of them okay let guys so starting from here uh, okay not this is just a mobile edit so starting from here one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen sixteen seventeen eighteen nineteen twenty twenty one twenty two twenty three twenty four twenty five twenty six twenty se
four, five, six, seven, or you can just read the name and just let me know, put in a poll or an answer, and I can start that backstage with you if you guys want. And you can ask any questions regarding that uh, specific shoot or specific backstage. What all the options should be put for the poll? This is, I guess this one is uh, the Halloween one. Let me see. Nope, this is not Halloween. I'm just trying to remember where the hell I kept my backstages. I guess on YouTube. Mm -hmm. I'll just stop sharing for a second, Nasser. I'll just uh, check out this. Sure. Or if you give some number, like just give a number one, two, three, and then. Uh -huh, uh -huh. Let me just check where are the, the full full versions now, because I, I have no idea where, where they are. Uh, videos. OK. Mm, they are divided into two different areas. OK, I will share my YouTube. Uh, let's see where is it. So they can decide by the name itself. OK, so some of these are here, but I will also show some besides these. So the best ones are top from the first row are the best ones. So these are the recent ones. And the down ones are like from couple, as you can see, quite long ago. I'm, I'm making a. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Go ahead, go ahead. So guys, vote which you want to see. Yep. Mm -hmm. Let's see here. Give me a second. Where can we see the polls? Here, right? I can't see more the results. Yeah, yeah, no, you can give a minute or two. It's fine. Give oh, a minute okay. or two. I'll just grab a little water. Sure. Video off, and sir, mera bhi. Uh, yes. Okay. There is be right poll. back in a minute. Yeah? There is a poll screen. Oh uh, yeah, I'll change it. Sorry, I'll just no, mute my uh, this sure. and.
हाँ जी हो गया सर पोल ओके फिनिशिंग इट यू कैन सी रिजल्ट लेट मी सी सो मार्टियाना इज द नंबर वन दिस वन मार्टिना चलो मार्टिना सही एंड व्हिच इज द नंबर टू उंड सर साउंड आ रहा है नो हेलो यू कैन शेयर द लिंक इन द ग्रुप टू ऑल दे कैन सी ऑन देयर एक्चुअली हां ये भी है ओके ब्रॉडकास्ट ब्रॉडकास्ट मैसेज सो दिस इज द वन आई विल प्ले इट साइड बाय साइड लेट्स सी I can change the mic somehow. There was an option to change the mic. I remember. आ रही है सर आवाज अब यस सेवेंटी टू टू हंड्रेड लैक्स है अली एक्सप्रेस गो डॉक समथिंग second is halloween right mm mm-hmm. let me disconnect my bluetooth quickly and let's see if we have any questions for this video this is one light video i got this uh, uh, what is it called the uh, octa box and it did a fantastic job it is like a great uh, thing okay let's see on red questions uh, okay okay let's see okay here okay how much time do you give with post processing uh, post processing is usually 10 to 12 minutes maximum 20 minutes if it's uh, something if i have to remove something in background or something like that So ten to twenty minutes maximum. I achieved results with the gels, but the end product is based on how 
good I am at the post that I frankly am not. So far, the gel photography is and so I badly need a workshop on researching. Can you suggest when and how it is possible? Uh, the gel uh, retouching workshop right now is not possible, um, obviously, in India uh, and in a group because of the, uh, uh, you know, the coronavirus and thing, but only online is possible. That can be arranged any day. Any shots that you can show where you have worked with male photographers? Uh, yes, uh, sorry, male models. Yes, I will show you. Give me a second. Uh, actually, I was very proud because I worked with a male. <laughs> okay, um, I am wedding photographer about 85 1.8 with Sigma and it's working with Wonders. Please tell me what are what are all I'm missing compared to Canon 1.2. Uh, trust me, you are not missing anything with 1.2. Because you're a wedding photographer, so basically what you need to do is uh, that I guess that if I'm correct, you're using 85 for the bridal shots or uh, the groom shots or the couple shots with both of them together. You're not using it during the event part, yeah? So 1.8 and 1. Point, uh, sorry, 1.4 and 1.2, there is a very little difference. It's about uh, those people. It's This only matters in those scenarios where a person is with such a nature that iPhone 11 versus iPhone 12. So every year he needs iPhone 12 because there is iPhone 12, so he needs iPhone 12. Yeah, so those kind of people. So there is nothing that you're missing there. Trust me, 1.4 is also an amazing lens and Sigma, as we all know, is a, is a great company with the, the great sharpness in their lenses. To the lens model, generally I used to get only models only from commercial shoots. Can you tell me how can I get sensual models in agencies? Is it optional? Uh, I'm not really sure uh, how to get sensual models. It totally depends on your work. It totally depends on uh, how you're approaching the company. And uh, this is kind of a very uh, dicey topic. It depends on country to country. As we know, in India, it's not that easy. Uh, only a way to get a model for sensual is like uh, uh, the paid uh, agencies or something like that. Yes, please go ahead, uh, ask as many questions as you want. Then we'll start uh, my first male photographer, um, male model uh, video. Mm -hmm. um, I am only using Instagram most of the time. I don't, I don't use any other app, whatever app uh, are out there. I don't use uh, any other app. I'm just using Facebook and Instagram. I don't use upload anything on Facebook, just Instagram purely. And for freelance work, honestly, mate, uh, you first need to have a good enough portfolio and uh, you need to work as much as you can and the work will automatically start uh, flowing in. Uh, I worked for free for a lot of brands for first uh, three years uh, of my photography career, uh, which is absolutely fine. Uh, it's not a bad thing, uh, but uh, you need to really work hard and really distinct your work in order to get something or get recognized or even get a response from a brand or a, a model. Okay, so the male uh, male model video is this one, my first male model here. Yeah, give me a second. I think just set it up, switch off the Bluetooth. So that's my first photo shoot with males. And I will tell you the story about this whole photo shoot. That's my system. We got good. We got good. And that's the first male model. Okay, 
Let's get back. One second. Okay, let's see. Mm -hmm. Good, these are same questions. Okay, mm -hmm. that is the light I can use uh, to shoot during the golden hour. This we already answered. Is there something wrong? Because I don't see, I, these questions are like quite old. No. But what LED the start of bringing up photography in you? Yes, uh, this is Adobe Premiere Pro uh, edits, most of them. And just to be sure, just to be very clear, these uh, videos are not edited by me uh, because I am not very good at that. My videos uh, are very, um, I'll show you my videos also that I did with Osmo Pocket. And uh, basically it took ages to render these videos and I, I don't really, I'm, I'm not that patient guy when it comes to videos. So uh, this was the first male uh, photographer, uh, male model that I worked with. And the uh, the initial idea was to have uh, only Harley Quinn as a, as a model. So the one of the models canceled. And I found this model in 20 minutes, the one which is in photos right now. And uh, then we also found uh, the another male model who was a boyfriend of my stylist. So the male model is the boyfriend of my stylist. And um, that's how we found uh, the male model. And eventually we decided to go with Joker slash Harley Quinn and Joker was like the Heath Ledger one and the Jacqueline one. And both of them, we made half face uh, the old Joker and half face the new Joker. How did I start my photography career? I started my photography career in Chandigarh, shooting my friends uh, from college, went to different uh, locations in the city, shot with my friends after the college. Then I started editing in Picasa, Picasa, I guess, and Photoscape, these were the two platforms. And same time I was uh, trying to learn some stuff on um, YouTube and uh, that's how I learned. Uh, Yana uh, Privet, if I'm correct in Russian, if I'm speaking it uh, right. Um, yes, there will be more in future. Hopefully, you just, uh, usually updates everyone about these events and it was their idea to do the webinar. So I'm really grateful for them that I'm being the first one to be here. Um, and uh, how how do you say that that it will be happening more often how did you choose portraits as your genre um well it's let's see how to explain it in the easiest term when you do something and after doing that thing you feel a sense of satisfaction you don't feel tired but you feel a sense of satisfaction that you can't wait to go home transfer the images retouch them and send it to the company slash model or anyone asap that's what I feel when I take portraits. So I usually send photos literally on the same day after we touch, uh, after the shoot or maximum in the next two days if I'm traveling in such case. Well, thinking creatively is not something that uh, you can just say, I will think creative from today and you'll start thinking creatively from today. It comes over time. It comes with lots and lots of failed attempts, trust me. So you just don't really overthink yourself. Don't, most of the photographers overthink and kill their creativity because what they're aiming for is I will upload a photo of a girl and they will get likes on Instagram. They will get 20,000 followers, 50,000 followers. That's all. That's where everything stops. Just think about that. I need to create the image that I like, not just for the sake of just uploading every day. So my Instagram, um, engagement is high, but just what you are liking and what you see and what you feel and what you are proud of. Don't put anything that just, just because today I did not post anything, 
let me put an image out because it has to keep my Instagram active. I stopped doing that. I was doing it for like three years. I stopped doing it two years ago. Now I just don't care about what Instagram uh, thinks. I just post it and I, I just like to see my timeline uh, in a creative way that I am proud of every single work that you see on my Instagram. I, I have story behind every single work that I did that. And why I did that, with whom I did that, I, I have like a lot of good memories, the flashbacks with every every work that I did on and that you see on my uh, uh, Instagram. Could you show your first portrait? Um, well, uh, let me see. My first portrait, I doubt it will be here because my first portrait was of uh, one of my uh, nephews, but I don't think so that, that Instagram was that popular at that time. I, I hope I can go as down as, as below as possible. I can show you one of my first portraits on in, uh, Instagram if I can find it. Because these are last two years work or three years, I guess. Well, as you see, I had a time when I was using glasses in every shoot. So being obsessed with something isn't that, that bad. Everyone does it. Okay, it doesn't go below this for some reason. I don't think so. This is my last work. Maybe Instagram does not load that below. One phone, give me a second, let me check. Mm -hmm. Well, one of my first portraits from India, uh, sorry, from uh, Europe that I can show, let me see. I, it's not loading here, but I can show you here. It's the first image on my Instagram, uh, on my um, Instagram. So I did some weird stuff, so just to be very clear. And I remember I set up like five lights here and I don't think so even a single light actually lit up the model. So that was just me thinking that five lights will light up the good model. And I never positioned it in such a way that the model will be lit. And what can you uh, give me an idea how much to quote for a fashion shoot? Will you follow a process? Um, well, uh, it's very difficult to tell how much I would quote versus how much you would quote versus uh, what client you're talking to. This is a business side of, uh, point uh, of photography and business side. So it depends on individual, depends on your work and depends on what you're, who you are talking to and how good of a talker you are in when it comes to negotiations. Okay. Okay. Okay, give me a second. Speed light I'm using uh, is uh, Yongnu 685. It's an old one now. Okay. Well, uh, let's see if I can find one good video. Oh, well, this, this is the video that I made. So my photography skills and my video skills are not as good. Right. She's a friend from Ukraine. Okay. That's my creative skills of videos. Well, guys, uh, if you don't have any more questions, just let us know how do you feel about uh, the today's webinar. And uh, probably it could be a couple month thing, you know, every couple months we could do something like this. And uh, give me a second, what I was trying to find. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, it was on my Instagram. Yeah. Well, I did shoot for nine or 10 hours recently, a couple months ago. 
and that's the video from that backstage. I don't know if I can share it. Is it possible? Mm -mm. Oh, let me switch up the Bluetooth. That's the last video, and then we are. Okay, guys, uh, one last request. Uh, please give your names uh, to the CHIS team in order to get the certificate for today's webinar. Uh, and uh, these guys will get in touch with you. Okay, let's see. Give me a second. I just um, mm -hmm. I will ask them to share the link. Uh, Okay, I guess it's working now. Okay, any shot that you can show where you have worked with the male model? All these questions are answered. Just checking. Okay. Okay. Workshop and Okay, okay, guys. So remember to share your names with the CHIS team, and uh, there will be a link. Uh, let me see if I can share it. Can someone confirm from uh, the team that uh, from the staff if where they can find this link uh, to register? So you'll be sent a specific um, what is it called uh, a certificate, and probably you'll also be notified for any future uh, webinars that will be conducted uh, by the team. Let's see, where can we find that link? We'll share it here in the chat in a moment. Okay, we'll okay, okay. so yeah, so it will be shared right now. So make sure to just uh, sign up there and uh, for future use, you can simply, um, what is it called? Uh, uh, simply you can, for future use, you can uh, simply get notified by CHIS team uh, for the workshops and stuff. Let's see if you guys see the, if you guys can see the link, just let me know. Because, okay, there is the link. Uh, I will reshare it just in case. And it has been yeah, shared. Brought yeah, yes. yeah we, I have shared it twice. So just everyone can just go through the link. And uh, let me see, we go through the link and where we do we go? 
and just add your details so one phone number okay phone number i can't really add uh, okay so cool guys uh, so i guess okay sir that would be it for today unless we have any quick questions last minute questions uh, we can take some voice questions. You guys can raise uh, your yes. Hand. You can raise your hand, and we can take some voice questions if you guys want. Yeah, so hands will be shown here, right? Yes. Please raise your hand. We will un unmute you, and uh, you can have a direct conversation with Alubhav. You need to, on the left panel, you need to click on raise hands and there you can. Okay, we have one request from Devendra. Uh, mm. I'm unmuting him. Okay. Uh, please go ahead, Devendra. Hello. Good evening, sir. Uh, uh, Michael Devendra here from Northeast, uh, Assam Northeast. Hello, Devendra. Uh, sir, uh, just like uh, it was like having the conversation with you, the webinar with you was like uh, literally good one, and I got to learn a lot of things. More importantly, about the uh, SAL CD. Mm -hmm. And sir, the genre that I have chosen for photography is speech. Uh, could you just tell me any of your uh, like uh, follow following people whom I can follow for more information regarding street photography? For street photography. Yes, sir. So street photography, right? Yes, sir. So for street photography, I only follow two photographers personally, and both of them are Indian. One is Salak Chap, and another another is Haram Khor. So both of them are good friend of mine. Exactly. Yeah. And I I literally follow both of them because I prefer to see my own country streets rather than the uh, you know um, outside streets because that's what I see every day. So like other than them, is there anyone else you should I follow whom I should follow? I I don't honestly don't follow anyone in street uh, photography except these two guys. Uh, there is uh, yeah that that's all actually that's all and these two guys only I'm the one who who I'm following. But again, uh, it is it is not very, you know, see, the thing is, it's about developing your style, taking others as inspiration. It's not about, you know, following someone and looking at his work and trying to recreate something. Yes, sir. Yes, yeah, so just and so, uh, uh, like, uh, right, mm -hmm. uh, like right now we are quarantined totally. We are uh, sitting at our homes itself. Mm -hmm. So, sir, some suggestions like uh, how can we improve our works or what type of photos can we take? See, uh, if you if you're living in a close community in India, so brother, yes. the easiest thing is shots from your balcony, shots from your um, what is it called, uh, roof. I, I I'll tell you one very thing. If I was on your place and if I had a balcony or a roof, I would simply start a series of photographs from the ba you have balcony or roof uh, both balcony also or roof also okay so wherever i'll find a bet a better uh, let's say frame i'll mm -hmm. literally every day go to one place on my balcony or on my roof point the camera to the uh, to towards the road and every day take a shot and by the time you're outside out of quarantine i'm pretty sure it's going to be more than a month you have a series of photos exactly. every day at same time. So, you know, you can see every day at same time, there will be something different in the frame. And trust me, it will tell a story by the end of the quarantine or whenever you tend to end, end uh, the series. I did this thing with, uh, uh, with, um, with one of my friends who used to come every day to the uh, college. And from one specific window, every day he used to take a photo of another window which was like at least four or five hundred meters away and we did it for like three years 
And right now, if we put it all in a time lapse, it tells a story with all the seasons, all the people going through that place. Uh, the, there was a tree which was cut down. There was a construction going on. Did it for three years. So try doing something like that. That will that will keep you interesting. I'm just giving you uh, giving you just an idea to tell a story of your 30 days or two to 40 days, 50 days or whatever. The whole 2020 year. Make it like a project. It's one photo only, right? Every day. Yes, sir. It becomes as a side project from what you are actually doing. So every day, 5 p.m., 6 p.m., whatever time is the best light for you, go up, go out, and just take this one photo, keeping yourself distant from the crowd, but also telling every day what you are doing, what you see every day at this time, specific time. Every day, 5 p.m., I saw this on this date. And start name, uh, numbering the photos with uh, the date and the time. And in 60 days, check it. It will be a small time lapse, which will tell you everything. Yes, sir. Sure, we'll surely do it, sir. Thank you, sir. Great. No worries. You're welcome. Uh, please raise your hand. Any other, if you have any question. Rajiv, Rajiv Kumar Roy. Uh, please go ahead, Raji. Uh, please go ahead. Hello, Raji. Do you do you recommend the use of uh, using the software SAL 2 or 2.5 to design the lighting setup or it was only for the training purposes? This was only Raji for only training purposes. I'll be honest with you. I have used this software like four or five years ago at least. And mm -hmm. uh, it is expensive software. If you see it is not cheap one. Yes, yeah, so it is kind of expensive software. And uh, I don't really, uh, I mean, I'm saying if you really have money and time to invest into this thing, you can. But it is again for a very high level photography. This is for like someone who is um, doing a very high level uh, commercial shoots, you know, for a, a big brand. It is not something that you learn lighting from. It is something that if you do not have access to stuff. Okay. And I, I have, as I said, that I was using it like two, three years ago. It is just installed on my system. So I just decided to make something more practical rather than just me talking. So to show you guys something visually, that's the reason I just opened the software, I guess, more than uh, two years ago. After two years, I'm sorry. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. How are you, Rajiv, sir? I'm fine. Thank you. Longing my isolation. Yeah, we all are. <laughs> uh, we'll, we'll catch you offline. Thank you. Um, sure. Anyone else? Do we have? Let's see. Any open question? There is. There, I saw someone. No. Mm -hmm. Arjun. Arjun. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's some connection issue with Arjun, I guess. Anyone else in the meanwhile till Arjun gets his connection back? Yeah, he got the connection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Arjun, please go ahead. Okay. Oh, okay. Hi, 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 Nibal. I'm Arjun. I'm from Kerala, but I'm living in Krakow for like one year. Oh, hello, so, Arjun. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I'm fine as well. 
Okay, so I'm just a beginner in photography. I uh, for me it's just a hobby right now, uh -huh. and recently only I've started like working with my friends. Uh -huh. So that's why I came to know about your channel, and um, this uh, like workshop was also really helpful for me. And um, the thing I wanted to know is, uh, you use a lot of colors, and mm -hmm. how do you set the white balance? Actually, Arjun, I, I tend to work uh, on auto white balance because let's face it, we are working uh, with a raw file, so you can always okay. manipulate the white balance in post, right? So instead yes, yes. instead of adding one more tension to myself when I am working with complex lighting, posing, you know, and makeup, outfits, everything around where I'm working indoor, I just tend to eliminate the things that I can probably fix in post. So one of them is not going very precise with the white balance because I know it's a matter of just moving slider left or right and I can fix it. And second thing is that I not uh, I don't tend to use very specific colors. So because if you know the color palette has uh, their um, numbers, you know there are like hundred shades of blue that you can use. So I go with the general blue, which is as close as to what I want, rather than going yes. and checking my color palette and spending twenty minutes selecting the exact blue that is in my head. So I know that I can use a HSL uh, hue saturation and luminance to manipulate uh, the color and make the shade of blue dark or bright more saturated or less saturated. So try to do as less as possible, uh, uh, which you know that you can fix in post, but focus more on what is the more important part that is uh, making your models pose, setting your light correctly, not having any bad shadows uh, and using the most out of location. Okay, okay. Uh, thanks, Anubu. That's all from my side. Thank you. Take care. Perfect. You are welcome, Arun. Yeah. We have a time for one more question in case anyone interested right now. The last question. I guess everyone is done after two hours. Okay. Well, I'm surprised to see so many people on Monday morning. Or Monday afternoon or Monday evening. Uh, Anubhav, there is no Monday or Sunday these days. Uh, I know, sir, but you know, still, uh, people. I'm pretty sure a lot of people are working from home. Oh uh, yes. Yeah. But... So I, I was, I was. That's why I was telling you, sir. On Sunday, uh, we should do have. We should have done it on Sunday. But again, uh, it is good. Uh, quite a lot of people showed up, and uh, quite. Uh, I guess. It, I hope people learned something and people uh, had some doubts cleared on, on their end. And thank you very much, uh, Anubha, for your time. And looking forward to host you again in India. We are getting numerous requests to join your workshop. I'm sure we'll do it in multiple cities, maybe in 2021. Let's see when the Hopefully, time Hopefully, sir, 2021. Yeah, definitely in 2021. And Guys, anyone interested in taking a direct workshop with him, please uh, contact him directly through uh, his Instagram, which we have shared. And we will be sharing you the recording and other details from this workshop. Anyone interested for getting a certificate from this, we would be sharing that as well. There is a link for the certificate here, so just have to go and register here or just send your details, something like that, right? And, and if you have any question, anything you want to know, uh, because we will be having a series of workshops, like we have a couple of different people lined up. We have for videos, we have basic photography. We had some questions about how to use the DSLR. So we have coming up with the Selja Bhatnagar. We have that. Then we have on different genres, which we are going to do, including the post-processing. And but we had started with the best, so thank you, Anubha. Thank you, sir, for inviting. Thanks a lot for everyone on the chess side. And uh, let's see, uh, hoping for uh, more uh, webinars very soon. And wishing everyone a safe stay in India and everywhere around the world, actually. All right, and, and if, if you don't mind, there is somebody written that can you answer this question? See if the let's is. See. Can you answer. please answer this question about poses? What poses? Let me see. How can you guide fresh model who is not in background and modeling? Basically, okay. So for poses, uh, it is very simple. Um, when I started, 
with the amateur models and uh, let's say i was also an amateur photographer so what i did was uh, i just found reference photos on pinterest took a screenshot and whenever i was taking my model for a photo shoot i used to show her to pose exactly like this literally on the photo exactly like this because the end thing was that i wanted a good photo and she has to try to pose as close as to that pose that i'm trying to show her that's how i taught and that's how i navigated the model and by or by over time you yourself as a photographer get to know how the poses work and which poses work in which location which lighting blah 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 so it is very important uh, but for the amateurs best is take a screenshot show these photos so i take like 10 screenshots and show one by one these poses according to the location yeah okay thank you thank you Anubal. and the last thing guys um we are doing this um we are putting all of us we are putting efforts we request you to donate some money to prime minister relief fund you can do it through different um different sites different uh, uh, like we have wallets or if you you can do it through our website also do donate as much as you can or as low as you can which is possible guys please do that and uh, thank you very much anubhav for the lovely experience and thank you again working with you it was really pleasant thank you thank you sir thank you have a nice day everyone you too bye